Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're off for our second video for BC Calculus. We're going to talk about continuity. We've got a, a, a guest person here. Jordan is already here taking notes. So she wanted to shout out, and you've got one there, Jordan, in your video. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. All right, so we're going to talk about what continuity is. And continuity has three things that you must check, and we're going to talk about continuity at a single point, x equals c. So a function is going to be continuous at x equals c if and only if all three of these things must be true. The first thing that must be true is f of c must be defined. What that means is there must be a filled in circle. Whenever you go over to x equals c and you go up to the graph, you've got to see a filled in circle. So f of c must be defined. Number two, the limit as x approaches c of f of x must exist. And from our video yesterday and what you remember from pre-cal, this means the limit from the left and the limit from the right have to match each other. So we have to have f of c be defined and then the limit has to exist. And the third thing that must be met is that the number one and number two have to match each other. f of c must equal the limit as x approaches c of f of x. What this is going to do is going to make a continuous graph. There will be no gaps, no holes. No gaps and no holes is a non-definition-y way of saying continuity. But our definition we have to hold to is f of c must be defined, the limit must exist, and on top of that, they have to match each other. So I'm going to show you some examples of how these could not work. So I'm going to sketch a function f so that f of c is not defined. So I'm going to get a little y-axis and a little x-axis there and get back to my pen. All right, so I'm going to have f of x. I'm going to have this is x equals c. So I'm going to have f of x go through here, and I'm going to have an open circle at c, and I'm going to keep going after that. So there is an example right there of a graph where f of c is not defined. You notice when x equals c, you look up, you don't see a filled in circle. It's an open circle. So that's the situation where f of c might not be defined. Let's go over to b and figure out how the limit as x approaches c could not exist. So I'm going to have my y-axis there and x-axis. Get back to my pen. So we'll, let's have c be somewhere out here on the positive x-axis. And I'm going to have f of c be defined. I'm going to put an open, sorry, I'm going to put a filled in circle there. And then out to the, from the right, I'm going to have the graph approaching that dot. But then from the left, we're going to approach a different dot. We're going to have, this is called a jump discontinuity. F of the limit does not exist because from the right, we are approaching this y value that is clearly taller than this y value from the left. And so this is an example of the limit not existing because the graphs are not approaching each other as we zoom in on C. Now let's take a look at one where f of c is defined and the limit exists, but number three is not satisfied. They're not equal to each other. Extend my page a little bit and I'll get my x and y axis again. y axis, x axis. Okay, so I'm going to have f of c be defined. There it is. f of c is defined because there's a filled in circle. I'm also going to make the limit exist. Watch this. From the right, we're going to approach open circle. And then from the left, we're going to approach the same value, open circle. Let me get rid of that little curl there. So let's take a look at this picture. I have f of c is defined. There is a filled in circle up here at whatever you want to call that. This is f of c. And the limit exists. The limit from the right and from the left, they are approaching the same value. However, these two y values are different. So you can have f of c be defined, you can have the limit be defined, but if they don't match, then it's not continuous. So this last example would be where something actually is continuous. Sorry about that random mark up there, didn't mean to make that. Y-axis, x-axis. Now our last example would be, if you have f of c be defined, and you have the limit match f of c, that means that from the left, we have to be approaching f of c, and from the right, we have to be approaching f of c. And that's the only way a graph can be continuous. 
is f of c exists, that means there's a filled in circle, from the right and from the left we're approaching f of c, and so the limit matches the function value. And so this is the only instance where all three are met for continuity. All right, so now we're going to take a look at some specific names for discontinuity. A point discontinuity looks like this. This is a point discontinuity. Sometimes this is also called a removable discontinuity. Removable discontinuity you should have heard in pre-cal. It's where the limit could exist, but for some reason either the function is not defined there or the function is defined elsewhere, like f of c is defined at a different place. So you've got a filled in circle, but it's not where the limit was heading. This is usually can be fixed by factoring. Now the jump discontinuity can never be fixed. A jump discontinuity is where the graph from the left approaches a value and then from the right it approaches a way different value. This is called a jump discontinuity. You can see a, a big gap, a gap in between your two y values. That's a jump discontinuity and that can never be fixed with factoring. An asymptotic discontinuity is exactly what it sounds like. It approaches an asymptote. So I could have f of c here not be defined because the graph is going straight up towards a vertical asymptote and even from the right it could go straight up or straight down. It doesn't really matter. But an asymptotic discontinuity always happens whenever you divide by zero. That happens when you divide by zero. And that cannot be fixed by factoring either. Um, so you've got a little definition there with about a point discontinuity also said to be removable. And that can be redefined and we can fix that. And I'm going to show you what I mean by all that in just a second here. All right, so let's talk about some different kinds of discontinuity and see if we can't fix them. On example A, I've got x squared minus x minus 6 over x minus 3. And we're supposed to find the values of which the given function is discontinuous. Well, discontinuous happens when we divide by 0. And if I let x equal 3 on example A here, you will see that we get 9 minus 3 is 6 minus 6 is, we get 0 over 0. 3 is the only problem we have. You can just look at the bottom, set the bottom equal to 0. That's the only place where you have a discontinuity. So we have to figure out what kind of discontinu discontinuity that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the top. That top factors into x minus 3 times x plus 2. And the bottom still has an x minus 3. And you can actually remove that discontinuity because I've got a common factor in the top and the bottom. So what I can do is I can get rid of those x minus 3's and I have redefined this function as f of x equals x plus 2. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. Out here when x equals 3, there was just a hole. And that would actually, if you plug in 3 for x, that hole you could tell would be up here at 5. So this is what that graph looks like. I guess we've got a y-intercept of 2. We we'll go up there is a picture of x squared minus x minus 6 divided by x minus 3. Since I had a common factor in the top and bottom, that creates what's called a removable discontinuity. And a removable discontinuity will be 0 divided by 0. All right, um, we've sketched through. All right, part B, f of x equals 1 over x minus 3. Again, we've got a problem at x equals 3. When x equals 3, we have a discontinuity. Um, I don't think I identified on A. I need to go back and actually answer the question. What kind of discontinu discontinuity is this from the graph? Is it point, jump, or asymptotic? Well, we can tell from my examples before, this is just a point or a removable discontinuity. So I'll do a point DC for A. And that can be fixed by factoring. Now on B, when I plug in 3 for x, I get 1 divided by 0. And unfortunately, there is nothing you can do about that. When you're dividing by 0, that is an asymptotic discontinuity. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is, a, this is also called an infinite or an asymptotic discontinuity. Infinite disk or an asymptotic disk. Infinite's easier for me to spell. And so, and there's no way to redefine this to make it continuous. You just, it, that's, there's nothing to do here. So what we're going to do is go over here to x equals 3. And we've got this graph that if you plug in like 
5 for x out here at 5 you get a positive value but if you plug in 2 for x you get a negative value so this graph looks something like this and then how did I know that it was below the x-axis to the left I've just plugged in some values if you plug in 2 for x you get 1 over negative 1 which is negative 1 and anything to the left of 3 is going to produce a negative value anything to the right of 3 is going to make it like for example if I plugged in 7 1 divided by 4 I've got a, I've got a 1 fourth and I'm sorry about all those random little dots I just put everywhere there I would fix it with an eraser but I'm not going to mess with it alright now let's take a look at a piecewise function and historically these are difficult for kids to graph we've got a breakpoint here at 1 so I'm gonna go out here to 1 and I know that's an important value it changes its behavior at 1 so if x is less than 1 that means to the left I'm gonna graph x plus 2 x plus 2 is not too hard to graph it's got a y-intercept of 2 and at 1, if you plug in 1 in for x, you get a y value of 3. So it's up here at 3. 1 plus 2 is 3, and it's just less than, so I don't have a filled in circle. So forever to the left, I am the line x plus 2. Now to the right, I am the line 2 minus x. And you might want to think about that as negative x plus 2. That is a line scooting to the right. And so if I were to plug in 1 into 2 minus x, I would be at a different place. You plug in 1 for 2 minus x, 2 minus 1 is 1, and I'm actually down here. I'm at a different place, and then I'm heading to the right. Piecewise functions we're going to practice a lot this year, and you might not have had a lot of practice with those. But anyway, this is a jump discontinuity. You can see the little difference in the graphs there. I've got a, I've got a jump. All right, so let's see. The last thing we're going to do, Jordan, is this the last example? Yes. Okay, we've got a fine case so that f will be continuous. We need the, the lines to match. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I need for x plus 3, that's this top graph, I need this to equal kx plus 6 when... What's the break point? What's this important part? The important part is when x equals 2 because that's when the, the graph switches. So I need these two things to equal when x equals 2. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x and solve this for k. So 2 plus 3 has to equal 2k plus 6. So 5 equals 2k plus 6 subtract 6, negative 1, that was supposed to be a k and I made it an x. So negative 1 equals 2k, so k is negative 1 half. So my equations should be x plus 3 if x is less than or equal to 2, and negative 1 half x plus 6 if x is greater than 2. So let's see if this makes sense. Out here at 2, Let's graph x plus 3. My phone's ringing. I'm going to turn that off. Sorry about that. Rude. Buzz, buzz. I know. Buzz, buzz. All right. So if x is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, and it's or equal to, I'm going to have a filled in circle. My pen is not working. Okay. Well, we're going to have to pause this real quick because my pen decided not work because... All right, so I've got it fixed now. So when x is 2, we plug in 2 for x, we get a 5, so 5. And it's or equal to, so it's a filled-in circle. And x plus 3, y-intercept of 3, it's just a normal graph up to there. So forever to the left, it's the graph of x plus 3. Now to the right, I am the graph of negative 1 half x plus 6, which is a line slanted down. And if you plug in 2 for x, you get negative one half times two, which is negative one, plus six is five, which is what we needed. It actually matches, and they have the same y value. But then we're scooting down, down one over two. So we've created a continuous graph. So that's enough for continuity, and I will see you guys tomorrow.